a very good evening everyone i hope my voice is clear can somebody confirm in the public chat yes perfect thank you so much so welcome to the odin talks live session i hope everybody is excited today perfect yes so today we have our speaker mr vijay pasculeti who is the ceo of of odin school so he will be the speaker for today's first half of the session so please concentrate to whatever he is telling so welcome mr vijay thank you thank you manjot i hope everybody is able to see me yes sir all right wonderful uh, so really nice to actually be in the class uh, uh, after a while uh, so very good evening to all my friends over here uh, excellent good to see the good to see the responses you know let's keep it lively and i'm going to speak a little bit about you know what how companies do the whole hiring process so uh, so first of all let me give a little background about myself before i before i set the context for this in you know, a short you know talk of about 20 minutes uh, i have been working in different companies the world over so i've been uh, working uh, in primarily in the us and in india but i've also worked in singapore in london in la in various other places as well and i have been as part of recruiting from the company side for a very long time so more than 20 years i have been kind of uh, recruiting people and i've seen a lot uh, of how companies recruit people into their organization so how they get new talent into the organization so i've been part of the processes in multiple places in multiple companies and uh, i want to share some of the insights that i've picked in the entire recruitment process so you can understand that from the other side you know so if your students looking to get into good companies i think it will be very valuable to understand what companies are looking for you know and how they run the process so this is again even today uh, uh, we we as odin school we talk to so many companies hundreds of companies are involved and you know they keep giving us a lot of feedback but i would like to kind of synthesize that to a few simple aspects which i am going to talk about okay so i'm going to present my screen uh, so let me see how i present my screen hold on just a minute all right so i am going ahead and sharing my screen so can you all see my screen can you confirm uh, uh yeah mr vijay we can see it excellent so let me kind of move this out and let me go through this okay so i'm going to be talking about how companies hire sorry that took me a minute to kind of do this and uh, so this is typically what companies follow and again this is uh, there are several companies there may be my minor variations but by and large every company follows a process very similar to this the first step is the profile shortlisting so this would typically be uh, you applying uh, for you putting your resume uh, the companies go through the resume and then they shortlist what they believe is a fit to be taken forward in the process and believe me this is a very interesting process uh okay so uh, this is a very interesting process because uh, uh, there are a lot of rejects that happen over here and i'm going to share some statistics on that as well okay the second process is the assessment process so this uh, pretty much every company has a different form of assessment uh, nowadays most of the companies are doing some form of online assessment so it's good to know about that the third there there is typically a subject interview so if you are in data science it will be a data science technical interview if you are in marketing it will be a marketing interview whichever subject you have your strength in you have the skills there will be a skill level interview which is a subject interview followed by generally it will be wrapped up with a general interview 
where you know people will that will be the final step before you are given the offer letter okay so that's a process that is typically followed now let us go through each of these steps so we kind of understand that okay now in the profile shortlisting what companies basically look for on the basis on which they do the shortlisting is most importantly the background they look at your education in many cases they look at the location uh, they look at the experience level and they look at the broad industry you're part of. If you're a fresher, it doesn't matter. But if you have experience, the industry matters. So if you are, many companies have a requirement that let us hire only from the insurance industry or from a financial industry or whichever manufacturing or whichever industry. So these are the kind of things they look for. And the other things they look for is the match on the skills that is on the JD on their side or job description on their side and the relevance of the skills. So this is how pretty much people look for it. And nowadays people are using tools. Almost all big companies use uh, some kind of an application tracking system or they review your uh, resumes uh, and they use a lot of AI to do this. And you know, the, but inherently if the, all the machines are trained to look only for this a kind of a background of yours and the skills that you have put on your resume. Now, what can you do about it? These are kind of some tips, you know, let me kind of share, which will kind of help you. One, make sure you do a good research of the JDs that you're going after, the job descriptions you're going after. Go after the right ones. So more and more irrelevant JDs you go for, it's very likely it'll get rejected by some kind of an automated system. But look for the matches and make sure that, you know, there are enough matches uh, for what you're looking for. And what's really important is you need to prepare some great resumes. And there are several tools now that help you build the resumes. For example, there are tools, several tools that you can also speak to the team in Odin School. They can help you. That if you look for certain skills and certain keywords that you want to mention, and your resume can be upgraded with those kind of keywords for a, spe a specific JD. But make sure that is real, of course. So the skills that you put in. So you'll be surprised by the number of resumes that get rejected as part of the selection process. From our experience, between 80 to 90% of the resumes are rejected in this step. So only kind of 10 to 20% make it through because the number of applications are huge in most companies when they roll the JDs out in the market, okay? So, uh, so please kind of take care of this, you know, when you, uh, when you build your resumes. And make sure resumes are really good. You, you should not underestimate the quality of the resume and what you write in the resume. It's very, very important because remember on the other side, there are a whole bunch of machines that are looking at you know, how to scan your resume and select using your resume. Make sure your resume is absolutely right, clean, put all the information that you need to put there so it makes to the next level. Now, the next, after the resume is shortlisted, there is an assessment. So what companies look for in an assessment is so simply to make sure that you have the threshold scores that are required to make it to the next level. So if it is a technical assessment, there will be some kind of a scores. It could be an aptitude, communication. It could be any kind of assessment. But normally, this will be a systemic assessment at this step because there are a lot of people who apply. Even if only 10 or 20 percent of the resumes make through, even that is a pretty large number that goes through an assessment. Now, what can you do about that? One, you may want to understand the assessment process. See, for example, if they are using a certain tool, the company, and if you know which company you're applying for, and if they are using a certain tool like a Metal or a Hacker Rank or any of these platforms, it'll be good to go to the platform and get a kind of feel of the platform or what, the, what any assessment looks like. Because in many cases, we get stuck with just understanding the platform even before we get to the questions. So try to do that. The other thing which I've seen work is sheer practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the much, much better chance that you will kind of, uh, you know, make it over here. So use as, as much practice as you want and keep it like, like a coaching, right? If you're kind of preparing for a competitive exam, the way you would prepare for that, you need to prepare something very, very similar over here, okay? So make sure that you prepare, practice as much and ask for platforms where you could practice before you get in. So if you're in Odin School, there are labs. And if you're, for example, writing an SQL kind of an exam outside, SQL labs, you can do a lot of practice before you go there. And similarly, there are a lot of platforms where you can do the practice. So this is the key. Make sure you practice a lot before you get to the assessment. And in assessment, typically what I've noticed about 20 to 30% make it. 
uh, to the next level in the assessment. So that means 70 to 80 percent actually don't make it through the assessment in most companies because assessments can be quite tricky, quite tough as well. Now, this is the tricky part, the subject interview. This is where I think uh, most people find it very difficult and it can be quite intensive. This can this is usually in the form of an interactive one-to-one -one or one-to-many kind of an interview setting where there are line managers, subject matter experts on the other side who would be taking these interviews. So what they look for, and here let me kind of share because I've been part of this for a long time. So they look for like multiple levels of your knowledge. One, do you know the certain concept? Okay, whichever concept, subject concept, do you know the concept? Second, can you comprehend? Meaning, can you understand the subject? And third, after that, can you apply that, if possible, in the company's environment? Okay, I'll give it to you in a very, very simple sense, if I can break it down, right? Uh, I think all of you, all of, uh, all, uh, everybody in this room has gone through SQL, right? So a question could be, uh, do you know how to write a select statement with a join? Okay, so that is meaning the testing, do you know the concept? So can you write it? So if you can write it, great, that is level one. The level two, they will look for, they'll say, how does this work? Okay, so how does this work mean? What does it mean? What does a select do? What does a join do? What are the meanings of the various parameters? That is basically the comprehension part. Do you understand what this really means? The third level will be, of course, if you go through that level, the third level will be on the application side. So the application is basically, they will give you a simple table and they will say, can you write a couple of tables? Can you write a select and a join? to join these two tables for a certain output. So this is where the application would be tested. And most companies that you know, we uh, partner with are looking at only these three levels. You know, Do you know the concept? Can you comprehend the concept? And can you apply the concept? Now, in some cases where I've noticed in a lot more uh, um, uh, you know, advanced companies where there are advanced level of subject interviews, they may also see check if you actually can analyze the situation you can synthesize based on certain concepts. And you know, at the highest level, they may ask you to kind of create a question yourself, you know, but that is very, very rare, you know. But in most cases, that would be where you know, you understand, and you can apply. As long as you're clear on these three steps, you would make it through these subject interviews. Now, what can you do about it? Okay. Number one, I would always say speak the truth in the sense, you know, where this comes from and, and uh, what really I've seen happen again and again and again. Don't put things in your resume, especially the technical things that you cannot talk about. Don't write about projects that you have not done. See, this is where you get caught even when you get uh, go deeper into the interview. If you write about a certain kind of a project and you're not able to explain that project, you will get caught, believe me. So try to speak about the truth, write only that on the resume that you have actually done. And make sure, instead of writing about like some 10 projects, write about only one or two projects. And believe me, the interview doesn't matter too much to the interviewer if you have one project or 10 projects. But if you have a project, they will question you on the project. So be ready to go in depth on the project and take all the questions. It helps a lot. And interviewers love this fact that you've done a project, you've done it seriously, and you know everything about it. So for example, if you've done a kind of a coding project, if you also speak about how do you implement it, where did you deploy it, did you use a cloud, what is the, what is the business reason or the business mandate that you are trying to solve using that program. So this kind of, if you go into a little depth, and of course the technical depth as well, is something the interviewer generally will like a lot. Now, what else can you do about it? Well, you have to demonstrate your knowledge. And talk about several examples of you know what you have done talk about projects talk about you know these things like i mentioned why did you do the project what was the outcome what were the challenges that you faced while doing the project and if you have really done the project and you can speak about all these technical aspects the interviews will always be impressed so talk about real stuff that you have done and making sure that you connect and you say, this is a problem I faced, and this is how I had to get help to resolve this problem. So I could not deploy it because this was the issue, and this is what I did, and then I went ahead and deployed it. Or it could be anything like this. Make sure you give examples to demonstrate that you have the technical knowledge for which this interview is kind of running, running at. Now, 
Finally, the last step is the general interview bit. This usually is done by either HR or somebody senior on the company side. So all they are looking for over here is, are you a company fit? Would you fit into the company? Or in other words, um, do I as an interviewer would want to work with this person for the next five years? So it is a very kind of a soft skill they're checking, but believe me, there are a lot of things that are being checked in this round. And people who are interviewing you here in this final round will be very senior people on the other side. And they can read through a lot of things in you. So what is important over here is one, be very, very positive in this round. It is very important, you know, I, we also talk about, you know, the etiquettes, how you dress, how you approach, how you smile, all these things are very, very, very important. You know, you need to have showcase a very, a, 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 a lot of positive vibes in this kind of a session. You've got to present yourself very well. And, you know, think about it in multiple ways. The interviewer first, he or she may want to want to work with you, number one. You may want to make her look good in her environment. Okay, if she's your, if the if she's going to be your boss, if you know that the, you're going to work for her, you should kind of demonstrate that you would make her look good in terms of in you know in in front of the rest of the company. You have to make sure that you will not cause problems in the team. Things like teamwork, team, team working, attitude, communication skills, all these things are checked. Try never to badmouth a previous organization. So generally, you know, if you're talking negative about a previous organization, it's very likely you may want to talk, you would talk out negative about this organization as well that you're interviewing for. So make sure you are generally very positive about everything in this kind of a step. You have to kind of demonstrate that you are a good fit. You will be something that the company would look forward to and the members in the company would be very happy to work with okay so these are the overall four steps and uh, i would kind of recap that together the first is the profiling where typically about 80 to 90 percent are rejected 10 to 20 percent make it through here they check background and skills typically there are a lot of automation right now either an hr person could do it or some automated tools could do it so make sure you go after the right JDs and make sure you prepare a great resume. When I say a great resume, not just the aesthetics and looks, which is important, of course, but also the content that you write. Because remember, on the other side, there are machines that are reading this resume. So make sure you write the right things over here. Very, very important. Uh, the second is the assessment, typically a technical assessment. They're looking for some kind of a minimum scores. And you need to try to understand the assessment and then practice, practice, practice as much as you can. The third step is the uh, typically the subject interview. They will check your knowledge, check your comprehension, and check your application skills. Make sure you demonstrate through several projects and examples that always works. And if you're able to confidently speak about projects, and if you get a chance, please showcase those projects also. You know, if you can, if it's an online project, you can log into the URL, just demonstrate, please do it. Or if it's an app, show them the app or anything or talk as detailed as you can on, on the project. And finally, the general interview, all they look for is a fitment. Will you fit my organization? Can, do I want to work with you? So that kind of a question they ask themselves. And what you have to demonstrate is a very, very positive approach. Be positive. Try to communicate that you will be a positive contributor to the larger ecosystem in the company. Okay. So this is typically the four things that I would say, and this is what I picked up over the years. Many, many, many interviews I have done, even today I do. And uh, believe me, if you work on this path, it should kind of help you. But uh, prepare, because many people don't prepare and they lose out. At least relatively, you'll be much better than those people who do not prepare. So these are all tips for you to prepare. And, you know, but what's very important, you focus, pick up all the skills that you should pick up in the program, and then use these kind of tips to demonstrate this in the in the process that the companies will follow okay so i would like to stop here and take some questions and if you have any questions i'm opening up the chat or manjot if there are any questions you want to highlight you can also bring this okay so all right. Uh, so one question i see over here is uh, are career gaps uh, considered 
a career gaps considered during the uh, shortlisting profile if not how do the interviewers look at career gaps all right so career gaps generally uh, career gaps i have noticed is many companies have a view on career gaps of late i'm noticing many companies preferring career gaps in fact i have had so many companies that have come to us saying that if you have students with career gaps please showcase that to us because somebody with a career gap has certain advantages they bring to the company generally they are mature they also understand the environment of companies because they have worked in companies before and that will make it better and many companies have a mandate of encouraging people with career gap to come back so career back uh, is not necessarily a bad thing in fact we have seen a lot of successful students uh, people with career gaps you know bouncing back and in fact we personally also like working with people with a lot of career gaps because that has we see that uh, that has worked really well you know so from a rejection perspective some companies may have but most companies i believe do not have any kind of a career gap rejections okay yeah. all right uh, so i see a lot of uh, you know questions flowing in i'm going to pick up some questions uh, over here uh, so some very specific questions like i am a uh, i'm a pharmacy student do i make it uh, can i make a career switch see i mean uh, normally if you're in the data science i understand most of the students are from the data science cohort so if you're from a data science and you have a pharmacy background see what is important many companies i know do not have any anything that we will not take a, a, any different background or background checks but what is important is try to match your resume to the certain jd for example if there is a pharma company like a like a novartis or a glaxo smith barney or a doctor or reddy's labs and they are looking for data science talent any day they will prefer somebody with a pharmacy background so that is when I, i i said in the very first step you know when the profile matching see if you can find jds that match your domain so that would uh, that would kind of uh, help a lot that would kind of help a lot in terms of your uh, resume is going through so that kind of little bit homework it's good to be done okay all right the next question i see there are questions flowing let me kind of increase the size of the screen okay so how many projects do you need to mention in a resume okay now my suggestion is more projects don't really make a difference even if you have two three projects because in this uh, in the in the program itself you will be doing five to six projects right if you have even two to three projects it is good enough but what is important is the depth in which you understood the project your contribution to the project and how can you demonstrate to the interview that you have actually done the project so that is where what that matters more than the sheer number of projects but of course number of projects it's good to show enough projects that the interviewer thinks that you have done a lot of real work but in the interview process the depth is what will matter but definitely mention projects especially if you are coming from a different background and if you are coming from a non tech background applying for a tech job then definitely put a lot of projects if you are coming from a non data science background getting into a data science a uh, you know a company then put a lot of data science project related information out there so that will all help in the matching believe me when these systems match on the other side they look for a lot of these keywords that they hope to match okay other question i have um, english speaking is important for the communication interview basically is english speaking important see the kind of jobs we normally get yes communication is important see communication is the art of putting your thoughts across right not necessary language but to be honest most companies do interview in english for the kind of jobs we get uh, we are getting right now uh, in india in uh, all the companies that we are talking to so good to brush up on your language skills uh, but at least be sure that you are able to communicate and put your point across see if you know the subject but you cannot articulate that or you cannot speak about that then how will the other person know that you know the subject so the other person has to know that you know the subject so you should communicate if you can brush up on your skills um, uh, at least to the level that you can communicate that would be very very helpful okay so the next question i have is is there any tool which can help our resume from getting a good score for a job description 
Uh, so again, it keeps changing, but there are several AI tools that we have. We are aware of quite a few, and uh, please uh, reach out to the placement team. They can also help you with this. There are several tools that can actually give you some kind of a guidance of how to kind of make your resume better for specific job roles or specific JDs. So those kind of things we can do. And I, I strongly suggest that you kind of try to do that as well, you know, to upgrade your this thing, clean it up. And nowadays the tools are so good, especially these generative AI tools who can actually look at your resume and start recommending a lot of better content for, for you know, putting on the resume. These are some things you should definitely use. And please take the help of the teams in Odin School. They should be more than happy to help you with uh, these things, you know. Is it possible to tell us the SQL and Python questions for practice purpose? Uh, there are several questions, you know. Uh, see, remember, the interviewer on the other side also first wants to make sure, is this a genuine candidate? So they will ask a lot of basics. So the basics first you cross, then they will ask you more advanced questions, right? So there will be practice. So SQL questions and Python questions are available all over the place, including on the Odin School uh, LMS platform. There's a practice section. You will see so many questions over there. So feel free. If you think those questions are not enough and you want to practice more, please reach out. Uh, the team will can give you a lot more questions. So questions is not a problem, but I'm very happy you're asking this question. If you have an intent to practice and you want more questions to practice, uh, I, I'm sure the team will be more than happy to provide those questions. Okay, the next uh, question from Shruti. This is interesting. I'm staying in Thailand, and is there a good opportunity to get into data science? See, um, uh, the only thing is we cannot help you with a job role in Thailand. There are quite a few people from outside uh, India who are part of this program. So the job assistance or the placement assistance is something we give more specifically to people who are looking for a role in India. If you're not in India, we can give you some kind of a guidance and some kind of a help in terms of cleaning up your resume, uh, the type of roles to match. But the effort uh, on finding the actual job should be put by you. So because we may not have the capability in various countries and different parts of the world. But in India, we have a very strong capability and that is what we extend to all these students in India. Okay. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Dike, I have one question to highlight here. Can you just explain it that there is a student who is asking if we talk one line in Hindi in between the interview, then it takes any bad impression on us. Yeah. Okay. All right. See, uh, so that depends on person to person, but in most cases, it does not matter because I take a lot of interviews myself and people can speak with a little bit mix of regional language, Hindi, as long as they speak primarily English and communicate the essence of what they're trying to say. And especially if the role is technical, we really don't care. I mean, at least in even in our company, I know we have hired so many people in the technical roles who not necessarily speak great uh, English. And, Eng and English is a good medium to speak, but it is not the only medium to communicate, remember. So, so if you mix a little bit of Hindi while you're speaking, chalta hai, there is no problem. Uh, is, is, there should not be an issue with that. Okay. So Manjot, you can highlight other questions as well. And let me know when uh, Akshit comes in, I'll be very happy to bring him into the class. But till then I'll be going through the rest of the questions that are here. There are a lot of questions. Let me try to address as many as I can. Yeah, uh, sure Vijay. I have one more interesting question here from Vikas. Hmm. He's like, sir, does age matter to enter as data science? I am at 38 from mechanical engineering background. Okay, well, I, I know people who are 50 plus who have made this transition to data science because data science is one of the unique areas where in addition to the technical skills, the domain knowledge also matters a lot because data science is all about applying data skills in a certain domain, right? So that's how uh, you will end up doing a, a lot of the work in the future, right? So in many cases, the domain background helps a lot. Like I said, right, we have got like placements where because they had a mechanical manufacturing background, they got into a job which is data science applied to a manufacturing setup. So in data science, especially, yes, yeah, some companies may have certain restrictions or their own self-imposed rules. But in many cases, I've kind of noticed that you can, uh, you know, even uh, the, basically if you are 
if you are you, if you if your age is even above 30 or above 40 it shouldn't matter as much but but you have to bring something to the table either you bring very very strong skills or you bring a knowledge of some domain and domain knowledge matters a lot and please make sure that you put that in the resume so just because you're going for a data science role and you say you're coming from a pharmacy background i would strongly recommend you put enough about about the fact that you know about pharmacy and now you have the data science skill that combination could get you some really really good jobs okay okay uh actually uh vijay there are all repeated questions so hmm. i'm just searching for the ones which are not addressed okay yeah this is an interesting one sir can open ai tools like chat gpt will impact data analyst job profiles well i i think i think it should only help uh, but not from a data analyst kind of a profile i mean the kind of jobs that we have i think these kind of generative ai is something you should look to leverage to make your job way more effective rather than you know look at that as a competitor okay so i think i think this is a world where we have to coexist with a lot of ai tools and it will be there so I would strongly recommend that you learn the tool and find a way to leverage that. Uh, that way we both coexist and you will have an edge over many, many others. So I always recommend we use AI tools to multiply the impact that we can bring into a workplace. So look at it as tools to help you rather than a competitor. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Vijay. So